Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to User Education. Um, today we will solve a few problems. These are part of the course called Mass Plus and Problems presented on Unizor.com. Um, this is a continuation of the prerequisite course, which is called Mass for Teens, uh, where I'm mostly involved in some theoretical uh, issues in mathematics. There are some problems, uh, obviously, over there, but they're kind of illustrative problems to illustrate the theory. Uh, in this particular case, in the case of this course, Mass Plus and Problems, I'm trying to present certain problems which really have to um, kind of force you to think about uh, the problem outside of the box. I mean, you definitely will be using the theory which you have learned uh, before, but it's in, more in a more creative way, so to speak. So the problems which I'm presenting in this course are not exactly standard. Sometimes they are maybe easy, but sometimes maybe more difficult. Again, the m main difference of the problems presented in this course is they are not the usual uh, stock math problems presented in school. So the purpose is obviously to train your mind this, these problems are basically like training grounds for your brain. Um, none of them, or very few of them, have any practical um, uh, application. They are just to, to ensure that your brain is functioning to its full capacity. That's training, that's gym for your brain. Okay. So today we have three problems. The problem number one is as follows. You have two numbers. Both numbers contain only digits in, uh, uh, in its uh, digital recording. So x has 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, uh, eight, 8 digits. Number 1 and number 2 as one 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 hundred digits. Now from arithmetic and by the way this is this lecture is problems about arithmetics. The arithmetic all four, that's how it's called. So in arithmetic we are all talking about basically numbers and their elementary operations addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. Now, there is a concept of uh, greatest common factor between two factors, be between two, two numbers. This is the number both are divisible by, and that's the largest number among all the divisible numbers. So I'm just repeating something which you're obviously supposed to know. So like, for example, if you have number for instance, uh, 6 and, uh, and let's say, what, uh, 15, for example. What is their largest or greatest common factor? Well, obviously, both are divisible by 3, and there is no bigger number than 3. Both are divisible. So 3 is their greatest denominator. So my problem is to find the greatest uh, common uh, factor of these two numbers. Well, obviously numbers are small, like 6 and 15, I just told you. You just basically um, go through all the factors and see which one of them is largest. Well, in this particular case, considering this is a very large number, is impossible. So we have to do something else. So, at this particular moment, I suggest you to pause the video and think about how to solve this problem. And I will continue with the solution. Okay, now, let's just implement certain representation of these both numbers um, in a different way, uh, the way how usually numbers are presented if digits are given, only digits. Well, what is digit? It's a decimal um, uh, system of uh, representation of the numbers, which means this digit has way 10 to the power of 0, which is 1. This digit has uh, basically the weight 
of 10 to the first power of 1, 10 to the power of 2, 3, etc., up to 10 to the power of uh, 7, from 0 to 7, right? So I can write x as 1 times 10 to the power of 7 plus 1 times 10 to the power of 6 plus etc. plus 1 10 to the power of 1 plus 1 10 to the power of 0. So this is a more algebraic, if you wish, representation of this number. This is just by digits and this is the representation using that every digit has certain weight. Now, same thing we can do with x, with y. y is 1 power of 99 plus 1 times 10 to the power of 98 plus etc. Plus, at the end we have exactly the same thing. <coughs> okay, so that's the beginning. And look at this, the tail is exactly the same. Right? So, up to the 1 times 10 to the power of 7 plus etc. 1 to the power of 10, 0, this part is the common part in both things. So the whole x is actually is here. Now, what's next after that? 1 to the power of 10 to the 8, 1 power uh, 15. That's the next group of numbers, right? So I'm talking about the representation of y. This is the tail. This is the next to the tail. Now, how can I represent this? Now, if this is x, this is 10 to the power of 8 times x. Am I right? Because 10 to the power of 8, I can just take out of the parentheses and, uh, uh, and I will have 10 to the power of 7, then 6, etc., up to 0, which is exactly the same as this. So that's the next group of 8 digits in the representation of y. So what would be next? Well, next would be, uh, uh, as you obviously understand, next would be um, 1, 10 to the power of uh, 15 plus 8. 23 plus etc. 1 10 to the power of 16. That's the next group of numbers. Which is what? Which is 10 to the power of 16 times x, right? If I will 10 to the power of 16 take out of the parentheses, then I will have exactly the same thing as x. So as you see, if I will group it by 8, my result would be that y would be equal to now what will not fit to the group of 8 23 next would be what 31 uh, 47 63 90 95 right let me check my uh, I think it's 95 yes 95 so the last one would be 95 the last group would be 1 10 to the power of 95 plus etc plus uh, 1 times 10 to the power of uh, 80 uh, what, 7 no 80 minus 87 I think yes so up to 95 we can represent each group as 10 to some power times x. And only starting from 96, we don't have a complete uh, group of 8. So I can say that this would be 10 to the power of 99 plus, I, I, I skip no, uh, one times, so it's obvious, 10 to the power of 98 plus. Ten to the power of ninety-seven plus ten to the power of ninety-six plus, and then I will have some number ten to the power of whatever ninety-seven in this case times x, then again ten to the power of ninety x. So I will have ten to the power of eighty-seven plus blah blah plus some some other ten times x. So all these groups I combine together. I put x 
outside and uh, the multipliers like this, like this, like this, I put inside. So this is the result of representation of number y in terms of number x. Now let's recall what we have to do. We have to find the, the common factor, which is the greatest or the largest among all common factors. Now, from this, obvious that this number and this number and this number, so if y and x have a common factor, exactly the same common factor should have this number, correct? Because if this is divisible by something and this is divisible by something, then this must be divisible by something. Because this is equal to y minus multiply, multiplied by x, so left part would be divisible, that's why the right part might be, m must be divisible. Now, this can be actually represented as 10 to the power of 96 as uh, 10 to the power of 3 plus 10 to the power of 2 plus 10 to the power of 1 plus 10 to the power of 0, which is 10 to the power of 96 times what? 1,111. So we have this number, one thousand one hundred uh, and eleven. So this is this. So our factor, which is a divisor for this and divisor for for this, must also be a divisor for this. Well, obviously neither x or y uh, are divisible by 10 to any kind of a power because they all contains only ones, including the very last digit is one. So they must have the common denominator with this. But let's just take a look at the x. Now y is obviously divisible by this. Now x is one 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 eight ones, right? Which is times ten to the power of four plus one 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 one. Correct? So it's one thousand one hundred and eleven times ten to the power of four, which is one 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 and four zeros and four ones. So obviously, x, x is divisible by this, and y is divisible by this, and there is no more, there is no bigger number, because everything else is 2s and 5s, and obviously x is not divided neither by 2 nor by 5. So this is the largest common denominator. x is divisible by it, and y, which is represented as 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 this and this is represented as this is divisible by one 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 so that's the largest common factor okay finished one to the first problem well it's not really difficult as soon as you understand the representation of uh, the number which is given you in digits um, uh, in, in the form of 10 to the power of something times this digit. Now the second problem is um, something which most likely you did study at school but nevertheless I will just repeat it. Um, here it is. Uh, let's take any number n. Any. It has certain representation in digits, in decimal digits, like n1, n2, etc., and k. Well, which means basically that n is equal to 10 to the power of uh, k minus 1 times n1 plus 10 to the power of k minus 2 and 2 plus etc plus 10 to the power of 0 and k. So that's the representation 
using these digits. So, my theorem, which I'm just presenting to you, is that remainder remainder of n divided by 9 is the same as remainder of n1 plus n2 plus etc plus n nk divided by 9. So the sum of the digits divided by 9 gives the same remainder as the number itself. Now well, this is kind of a theorem, if you wish, so let's just prove it. Now, how can we prove it? Well, actually, it's very easy. Because I can always represent 10 to the power of, let's say, k minus 1, as 10 to the power of k minus 1 minus 1 times n1 plus n1. So this is equal to this, obviously, right? 10 to the power of k minus 1 times n1 minus n1 plus n1. Now, what is this? This is basically 1 with certain number of zeros minus 1. Right? That's what this is. Which is 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Right? Which is 9 times 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Whatever number of 1s is which means it's divisible by 9. So what I would like to say is that if I will represent each number like this in this format, I will have 9 times whatever some big number, m1 plus n1. Each of them. So I will have n, which is equal to 9 times m1 plus n1 plus this one. It's the same thing. It's, it's 1 and many zeros minus 1 plus 1. And minus 1 would be many 9s, whatever number of 9s is. I'll put it as m2. And again, minus 1 and plus 1 multiplied by n2 plus n2 plus etc. And the last one would be 9 times uh, nk plus nk. Okay? This one. 10 nk. No, that's the previous one. Then would be nk, that nk k minus 1. k minus 1. Plus nk would be by itself, just 1. So, what do we say? We have this is divisible by 9, this is divisible by 9, this is divisible by 9. So, everything is divisible by 9, except this, 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 and this. So, n would be represented as 9 times m1 plus blah, 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 plus n1 plus n2 plus etc. plus nk. So, sum of digits and n have to have exactly the same remainder if you divide by 9 because this piece is divisible by 9, right? So if you divide by 9 and you'll have some remainder here, you must have exactly the same remainder here because rep representation of any number, if you divide it with cer certain remain remainder, so in n uh, time, 9 times p plus q, right? q is remainder, and p is, uh, uh, how is it called, quotient, right? And that's a unique representation. So if n is equal to this, then this sum of its digits must be exactly uh, like this, which means p should be the same and q should be the same. That's why remainder is the same. That's the end of the uh, proof. So remainder of the division of the number and some of its digits, division, d d division by 9, is exactly the same. And incidentally, by 3 would also be the same, because 9 is always divisible by 3. So in this representation, whenever I represent it as 999 something, it's divisible by 3. So div division by 9 and division by 3 have, have exactly the same property. 
some of the numbers, uh, digits of the uh, digital rep decimal representation should have exactly the same remainder as the number itself. And as a consequence, if remainder is zero, which means if number n is divisible by nine or by three, then the sum should be divisible by nine or by three. So this is a rule which you can uh, basically apply to find out what, um, uh, wh whether this number is divisible or not divisible by, but well, let's say by nine or by, or by three. You just take the sum of the digits, which is much easier if you have a big number, you can't really easily divide it by nine without some kind of either calculator or long division. But to add the number, uh, the digits of this number, very easy. You can check whether it's divisible by 9 or by 3. Okay. Now, uh, and the third problem, which is very much related to this one, it's based on this one, is the following. Let's assume that you have two numbers, n and 2n. It has its own representation, m1, m2, etc. M, uh, what's the letter? Uh, let's say p. Now, what if remainder of division of the sum of these? is the same. So, if remainder of the division of these, sum of these digits, is exactly the same as remainder of these digits, then my theorem is then n is divisible by, uh, uh, by 9. We are talking about divis division by 9 and remainder of the division by 9. So, if the sum of digits of one number, if remainder of the sum of digits divided by 9 is the same as rem rem remainder of the division of sum of double that number uh, when I divide it by 9, if remainders are the same, then the number is divisible by 9. So, one number double that number, we have the sum of these digits and we have the sum of these digits. If these two sums dividing in, in a division by 9 give the same remainder, then the n is divisible by 9. Okay. Here is uh, the very simple proof. Now, if n has certain uh, representation as 9, let's say, p plus q. So p is quotient in divi dividing the n by 9, and q is remainder. 2n, let's put it p1 and, p and q1. 2n is also Now, let's take the sum of digits. Sum of digits, which I will put sigma n i t, also can be represented as some other 9 times, let's say, um, x plus q1. It must be the same q1, right? And sum of digits of the 2n should also be 9y plus q2. And now I'm saying that these two are the same. So sum of digits divided by 9 gives some remainder of this, and sum of the digits of the double number dividing by 9 gives exactly the same. So q1 is equal to q2. So I can put these are the same. Let's put it Q and Q. Q and Q. So what follows? Subtract them. From 2n, I subtract n. 
I will have n is equal to 9 times p2 minus p1. q minus q would be 0. So n is divisible by 9. That's it. That's the end of the proof. So, again, this is an immediate consequence of the previous problem. In the previous problem, I was telling that division of the number by 9 gives exactly the same remainder as division of the sum of the digits by 9. So in this particular case, since both numbers, n and 2n, give the same remainder here, it means that the numbers are the same, have the same remainder. And if numbers have the same remainder, then their representation would be this. p1 and p2 quotients are different, but the remainder is the same. And then I just subtract it, and that's it, and that's it. Easy. OK. It's very important to read the notes for this lecture. Every lecture on unisor.com for all courses, including this one, have the visual representation and the uh, textual representation. Basically, you can say that the whole website, unisor.com, is a visual textbook. So there is a textbook. And on each like chapter or part of the book, whatever, um, have a lecture. Now, if um, you understood more or less, I hope, uh, whatever I was talking about, it's really very important to repeat the same thing when you just read the text. Text might be slightly different from the uh, whatever I'm presenting, maybe different letters I'm using for whatever doesn't really matter. The idea is exactly the same, and the textual part is written basically as a textbook. It's nothing like abbreviated or anything. I mean, it's really like a textbook, um, and, and you, can, uh, you can read about the same thing, um, which basically will help you to maybe um, uh, understand better whatever I was talking about during the lecture. Now, the whole site, unisor.com, is totally free, uh, no advertisement, uh, sign-on is uh, optional, only for those who want to study under somebody's supervision uh, to establish the relationship, obviously. Otherwise, if you are just self-studying, you don't even have to sign in. Well, uh, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>